Hey, hi, hello. I have a dog. I have some coffee in the blue cup again. And I have a book that I just finished, which first of all, I would highly suggest that you read. So good. But that's not actually what I want to talk to you about. What I wanted to talk to you about is how free stuff got me to purchase this book. Yes, an actual physical book. I paid $17 for, apparently. Um, and how you can use that to help you sell more stuff in your store too. So, let's get into it. All right, so if you have been following on the vlogging channel, and if you're not, you definitely should be, because over there we have vlogs, which are like day in the life, behind the scenes kind of things. And then we also talk about fun things like books and productivity and planning and all those things that light me up that are not super business related. On the vlogging channel, I've been talking a ton about my new Kindle. I have been a paper person. Y'all make fun of me all the time because I have 87 notebooks and you're always like, Becca, you need to like do that digitally. And I'm like, <laughs> no. Um, but in November, I got a wild hair and decided to buy myself a Kindle. I'd never used a Kindle before. I think I had a Nook a really long time ago, like before they were actually good. Um, but I got a Kindle and one of the main reasons that I got it was because I found out that you could get books through Amazon Prime and read for free or for free because you're already paying for Prime. So I got my Kindle and I regret to say that I fell in love with it. I really didn't want to like it. I don't know why I bought it wanting to not like it, but I really didn't want to like it. I was like, no, I'm a paper book person. I want to feel it. I want to smell it, you know, like all those things. But y'all, if you don't have a Kindle, you really should get one. I will link it down below. They're super lightweight. They're small, so they're easy to hold. You know, sometimes books get really heavy, like especially if you're like holding them up, they get heavy, but the Kindle doesn't do that. It's so lightweight. And if you already are doing Amazon Prime, you can get all these books for free. Okay. In my free adventures, looking through the prime books i found a book that i actually had on my amazon list that i had been wanting to purchase for a while and that book was called carnegie's made i had seen it a while ago i would heard it recommended i was like oh this would be good i almost purchased it a couple of times but i'd never read anything by the author i wasn't sure you know like going and buying something from someone you don't know yet can be terrifying because it's like this could be an amazing book or it could be a horrible book and i don't know yet so i didn't buy it it's been sitting on my list for i mean like years years it's been sitting on my amazon wish list um and i saw it on my kindle and i was like oh i can read it for free that sounds great and so i read it in like less than a week and then i went on a whole tangent because i found another book by the same author this author her name is marie benedict and i read that whole book like within a week it was lady clementine it was about um churchill's wife and it was so good so good and then i found another book by marie benedict and so i read that one too and then the other day i was in barnes noble and walking around as one does in Barnes noble because it's such a lovely place to go and i saw this book also by marie benedict and i bought it now would i have purchased this book a few months ago no no i really wouldn't have um the cover doesn't like super speak to me the title doesn't super speak to me if i didn't know who she was i hadn't read any of her books i wouldn't have bought this book like i would have been like eh, you know go find something else by someone that i trust but because i'd already read her other books i'm now obsessed and so i bought the book and spent my 17 dollars because they got rid of the educator discount and i'm very angry so if any of you have connections with barnes noble tell them i am not happy with them and they need to bring that back paid full price for this book which i never do so why am i telling you that well because if you're here that means you probably have a tpt store and in your tpt store you are required required to have at least one free product and recently i saw a bunch of people talking about getting rid of all their free products or like charging money for all their free products which i thought was a really odd move so i wanted to talk about why you might want to have free products the simple answer is free products actually bring you sales for example getting marie benedict's book free 
for Amazon Kindle meant that I purchased this one. Now, I don't know exactly how that works. Like she probably gets paid something from that, right? So it'd probably be a better example if I'd bought it from Amazon, the physical copy, but neither here nor there. The point being that because I read her free content, I then purchased something full price. I wouldn't have done that if I hadn't read the free book, okay? Okay, so when you're looking at your store, it is really helpful to have free products as almost like a free trial. It's like an introduction into what your store is and what it's about and what you can expect from your store. Because if I read her one book and it was good, then her other books are probably gonna be good too, right? And same thing for you. If someone gets your free product and it's good, they're probably gonna like your other things too. I don't know about y'all, but I am really stingy with my money with companies that I don't know. Now, Lily Blitzer, yeah, I'll, I'll spend some money. Disney, I'll spend some money at Disney, but I am not gonna go buy something from some random store that I do not know. And if I am, I'm gonna buy like one thing. We're, we're gonna try it. I'm not gonna go full ham if I do not trust the store. And this is especially important online because online, you know, things can be sketchy. Just saying. So if someone is coming to your store or if they're looking for something and they see a free product, they are so much more likely to download that free product than they are to spend their hard earned money with someone they don't trust. So having a free product builds trust because it allows someone to try your products, try you know what you're all about before committing to spending the money. This would be especially important for people who are like newer to TPT, people who are maybe new teachers, and then we have the added layer of, you know, teachers don't get paid that much, so it's helpful to have free things as well. So the real main reason that we have free resources is for new people to try out our products, to gain that trust so that they will then purchase things and trust that your stuff is gonna be quality. And the third is that then they will come purchase things and so it will make you money. Now, one thing that was done really well through this example is that Marie Benedict's other book was also really good. It wasn't like I had this book and I read it for free and it was awful or it was like, eh. It was, it was really good and so then I wanted to do really good things. So when you're looking at your free products, make sure your free products are really good too. That doesn't mean they have to be like, you know, you put hours and hours and hours and hours into them, but it does mean they have to be high quality. It means that they have to be useful. It means that they have to be fun. Like it means that they have to solve a problem that people are having. Otherwise they're not gonna have a purpose to download your free product and they're not gonna want it or they're gonna get it and be like, this is dumb. And then they're not ever gonna buy anything from you again because it was you know, not helpful or it was low quality or it was ugly or whatever it is. So make sure that your free products are high quality because this is a sampling of your store. And if the sample is not good, then nobody's gonna wanna buy your stuff. As I'm saying this, I'm like, I should really go back and look at my free products and make sure that they're all up to snuff too. Cause I'm sure I have some that are really old that I'm probably not super in love with, but make sure that they are high quality. Point number two is that something you wanna do a little bit different than this example is that in the internet, you don't actually want like a whole book for free. While it works with like Kindle, with, you know, I was looking for books and stuff like that, you don't want free products that are like super huge ginormous because the point of a free product is for someone to like, you know, try it out and then come back for more. So if you have a free product that lasts like one class period, then try it out and be like, oh, that was great, we should do more of that. Maybe even like a week, you know, here like, here's five warm ups that you can use this week, great. But if you have like, here's three months worth of warm ups, then you run into one, people probably aren't gonna finish them. Two, they won't need to come back to your store anytime soon because it's gonna take them forever to finish all those. And three, if they do bother to finish them, they might just like forget where they got them and not be interested anymore. So in the internet world, you actually don't want super huge ginormous things because people are less likely to actually, you know, finish them. And 
whether or not they finish them, they're less likely to come back to your store to come and get them. So instead you want something that's like a quick win. What is something quick? Like here's a game you can use tomorrow. Here's a couple of warm ups you can use. You know, what are quick wins that you can use in your store that give people quick results that leave them wanting more? That's what we want out of our free products. That doesn't mean like you give them a half of something but it means, because again, we want that quality, but it means that you give them a quick win, something they can implement quickly so that they'll come back for more once they see how amazing it is. Which leads me into my third point about this, um, which is that with your products, you want the best and like most strategic way to do your free products is to use your free products as freebies that lead into your product lines. So if you have a product line that is a whole bunch of warmups for all the different seasons or whatever, have one that's free because when they try that one for free, they're like, oh, I like these. I'm gonna go back and buy all the other ones in that same product line. The book that I read was called Carnegie's Maid. So it was like 1880s historical fiction, all that jazz. This one is also historical fiction. It's a different time period. It's um, World War II, but it's still historical fiction. It's still like on that same vein of if you were interested in that, you're probably gonna be interested in this too. So having those similar themes is going to be the best. I often will look at a product line and, or whenever I'm designing a product line, I will often do this. For example, I have a couple of different like Thanksgiving themed centers, okay? And I have a free Thanksgiving themed center that you can use by itself and you don't have to buy anything else. You can just use that and that's fine. And you can use it and your kids will love it and it'll be great. But when you go click on that, then it's like, oh, this is also in this bundle. Or when you buy it and you use it and then you're like, oh, I need more Thanksgiving centers. And then you can come back and buy more or again it pops up in that like get this in the bundle and then you can just do the whole bundle so using your freebies to lead into your product lines is going to be the most strategic way to use a freebie because you're giving people a little taste of what's to come and then they will want to buy more again don't make it so they have to buy more but do make it so they will want to buy more like maybe if you have a game that comes in like six different versions make one of the versions free They'll use the game, they'll love the game, and then they'll go buy the other ones, right? Right. Now the other way to offer free things is not to do it on TBT, but to use the same kind of thing to promote your email list. When you link a freebie to an email list, that means that now you're not just giving it away for free because you're getting someone's email in return for them getting the freebie, okay? Okay, so now you have the ability to send them emails which will then in turn be much more likely to make them purchase from your store. This is especially effective if you can make your, again, a freebie that goes along with your product line. So if I have five Go Fish games and I make the first one free when you sign up for my email list, then after they join my email list, I can be like, oh, I could send them an email and be like, hey, I saw that you liked, you know, this Go Fish game. So you can also get these other four sets of Go Fish in my TBT store. Here's the link to go buy it. You can then promote the things that they were looking at, you know, like promote the product lines that your freebie is associated with. That is like next level freebies. Now, obviously this means that they're not on TBT anymore if you're sending them through your email list, but I kind of like that. I am much more likely to put my freebie on my email list than I am to put it into TBT. That doesn't mean that I don't have freebies on TBT because it all depends on kind of how I'm using it and what my purpose is and all of those kind of things. But it can be really, really helpful to have those things going to your email list to help you build your email list. And then because you have a lot more say about like emailing and following up and sending other products and stuff like that. So use your freebies to send people to your email list. Um, I often go to the question about whether you should have like, if you have freebies on your email list, if they should be the same as on your TBT shop. Here's my two cents. I have some that are freebies in my TBT shop and in my email list, but I have most of my email lists are not on TBT. Pretty much most of my freebies from TBT are also on my email list, 
but not all my email list ones are on TBT. When I use it on TBT, it is specifically because I'm promoting a product line. And so I'm using this freebie so that you can test it out and try the product line. Um, on my email list, I will also do that, but I also have other things that are one-offs or just for fun or something I used in my classroom that's not big enough to like make into a product so i just throw it in there instead and you can get it for free um those are fun things to do and then you know you have a bonus content for your email list subscribers i will say though if you do have more than one freebie you're giving your email subscribers make sure that they can access the other ones so you don't want to be like oh no you don't get this because you already signed up so i always try to send my new freebies to my email list subscribers to make sure that they have those as well all right friends so that's a little bit about how my kindle got me to spend money on this book i will also link this book down below it was fascinating i gotta say it was really good it's about a movie star but she doesn't start as a movie star and she also invents things fascinating and i didn't know who she was so i had no prior knowledge going into it it was so good um i will say i've read i think four of her books and they've all been amazing and i now want to read all the other ones I don't know how many all the other ones are, but I'm gonna find out and I'm gonna read them all. So I'm gonna go and work on that and y'all go work on your freebies and I'll see you on the flip side.